Silence of the cosmos is deafening. Despite decades of searching and billions of stars that could host life, we found nothing. No signals, no megastructures, no visitors, nothing. But why? Let's venture beyond the conventional explanations and explore some mind-bending alternatives. What if intelligence itself is fundamentally rare, not just uncommon, but almost physically impossible? Consider this. Evolution has no built-in drive toward intelligence. On Earth, it took over 3.5 billion years and a chain of incredibly improbable events for humans to emerge. Theoretical physicist Marcelo Gleiser argues that intelligence could be an extreme outlier, a cosmic accident that happens perhaps once per galaxy or even once per observable universe. Think about it. The chemical requirements for life, the evolutionary pathways to complex brains, the stability needed for technological development. What if these have such narrow windows that they almost never align? Maybe there's an unknown law of physics that places a hard limit on the number of technological species that can exist simultaneously. Perhaps the anthropic principle, the idea that the universe's properties must be compatible with the observers who witness it, means that our existence as conscious beings is already the ultimate statistical fluke. In this view, we aren't just unlikely, we're a near miracle. The universe's vastness wouldn't be teeming with life, but would instead be the necessary backdrop for even one intelligent species to have the infinitesimal chance of emerging. Sobering, isn't it? Here's a truly wild possibility. What if our universe is literally an experiment, not a computer simulation, though that's a fascinating topic for another video, but a cosmic laboratory created by higher intelligences? Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb has suggested that sufficiently advanced civilizations, perhaps type before on the Kardashev scale, could theoretically manufacture baby universes. If true, our entire reality, with its physical laws and constants, might be deliberately designed. Under this scenario, we don't find aliens because they don't exist in our universe. We're the experiment. The creators may have seeded just one technological species, us, to observe our development in pristine isolation. It's the zoo hypothesis on steroids. We're not just being watched. We're in a controlled experimental environment. The implications are mind-blowing. If true, the physical laws we discover aren't random or arbitrary. They're parameters set by experimenters. Our cosmic loneliness would be intentional. And the universe's seeming hostility to life might be a controlled variable we'd be performing on a cosmic stage for unseen observers. Our entire history, an experiment running its course. Perhaps we're not alone at all. We just can't recognize our companions. This might be the most humbling possibility of all. We humans expect aliens to send radio signals, build megastructures, or otherwise announce themselves in ways we understand. But what if extraterrestrial intelligence is so fundamentally different that we literally cannot perceive it as intelligent. Imagine an alien mind that exists as a planetary ocean, a complex plasma in space, or distributed throughout a magnetic field. Science fiction has played with these ideas. Think of Stanislaw Lem's Solaris, but real scientists also entertain such possibilities. Aliens might exist as higher dimensional beings or distributed networks we simply don't have the capacity to recognize. Their psychology might be so alien that we lack the mental framework to even identify their artifacts or communications. Imagine trying to explain human politics to an ant, then multiply that cognitive gap by a million. We might be surrounded by signals we dismiss as natural phenomena because we can't conceive of the mind that created them. What we call dark matter, quantum fields, or even the cosmic microwave background could theoretically host forms of consciousness so different from ours that we're simply blind to them. They wouldn't be hiding. They would be in plain sight, yet invisible to our limited perception. Here's a truly existential possibility. What if the universe, by its very nature, can support only one technological civilization? Not due to probability, but by metaphysical necessity. In a radical interpretation of the anthropic principle, perhaps the universe requires an observer to exist 
but cannot sustain multiple independent observer civilizations. It's as if reality itself can only handle one focal point of consciousness. A second might somehow violate the fabric of existence. This sounds mystical, but consider that quantum physics already recognizes the special role of observation. What if, on a cosmic scale, the universe wants just one storyline of intelligent life? This would make us not just rare, but fundamentally unique, the universe's sole witnesses. Carl Sagan criticized this as the solipsist approach, arguing it was arrogant to assume we're special. But what if the solipsists are accidentally right, not out of human vanity, but because of some deep principle we don't yet understand? If true, all the billions of galaxies and eons of cosmic history ultimately produce only one technological species, us, and this isn't coincidence, but necessity. It would imbue our existence with almost mystical significance, making us both privileged observers and cosmically alone by design. Standard discussions of alien life assume we all share one universe. But what if the truth is far stranger? Modern cosmology entertains the multiverse hypothesis, countless parallel universes or bubble universes, each with its own laws and histories. Perhaps intelligent life is abundant, just not within our particular cosmic bubble. In this view, every advanced civilization might exist in isolation, forever separated by the boundaries between universes. We would never know of aliens existing in other bubbles. There's simply no way to communicate across these ultimate divides. This silent multiverse theory suggests that the correct answer to are we alone in the universe is yes in our universe, no, in the broader multiverse. It's a cosmic scale isolation more profound than mere distance. We could have infinite neighbors, yet each locked in their own universe like islands in different dimensions. It's both comforting and disquieting. Comforting because it means intelligence isn't a one-off miracle. Disquieting because it means our search for companions within our observable universe is fundamentally futile. We're effectively alone in our branch of existence, even if life teems elsewhere in the multiverse. Maybe we're not alone, but the universe keeps us apart by design. Not through separate dimensions, but through the very fabric of space-time in our own universe. The staggering scale of space creates natural isolation zones. Even if the galaxy hosts many civilizations, the vast gulfs between stars, combined with light-speed limitations, make communication or travel nearly impossible. Any signals might take centuries or millennia to traverse the gap. Beyond a certain distance, space itself expands faster than light can travel, meaning vast regions of the universe are forever unreachable. Each civilization might be marooned on its own cosmic island, separated by physically uncrossable gulfs. Perhaps there are even self-imposed isolation mechanisms. Advanced societies might discover that long-range communication is futile or dangerous. Maybe they learn that broadcasting their presence attracts cosmic disasters or triggers instabilities in space-time. Under the cosmic isolation hypothesis, the galaxy could be full of life and minds, yet we remain mutually unreachable, each civilization a solitary sentinel gazing at the stars and never hearing an answer. Not because no one is out there, but because the universe itself enforces our separation. What if the most disturbing outcome isn't discovering hostile aliens, but confirming we truly are alone. The psychological impact of absolute cosmic solitude could be devastating. As Arthur C. Clarke famously said, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. But perhaps the former is more terrifying still. The realization that all the hopes of finding companionship among the stars all the relief of not bearing the burden of consciousness alone would evaporate. We'd face the cold truth that the entire weight of meaning in the cosmos rests on our shoulders. This implies that life, particularly intelligent life, is extraordinarily precious and fragile. If we are the only thinking beings, then the fate of awareness in the universe lies with us. Any self-destruction wouldn't just be a planetary tragedy, it would silence the only spark of knowing the universe has. There's a profound loneliness in being alone forever. 
humans are social creatures. We've always formed communities. On the cosmic scale, we've hoped for a community of minds among the stars. Without that possibility, the universe becomes dauntingly empty. No mentors, no peers, no one to share the wonder of existence with. This scenario would impose a heavy responsibility. If we're alone, then it's up to us to imbue the cosmos with meaning, to keep the flame of consciousness burning. Some find this motivating. Others find it terrifying on an existential level. It makes us question why the universe exists at all, if only to host a single lonely race. Intelligence might be not just rare, but nearly an evolutionary impossibility due to the quirks of natural selection. Consider Earth's history. Many critical evolutionary breakthroughs happened only once. The leap from simple cells to complex cells with nuclei occurred just a single time in over 4 billion years of life on Earth. Same with sexual reproduction, multicellularity, and intelligence itself. Human-level intelligence is essentially a one-off evolutionary innovation. We see many cases of convergent evolution, different creatures separately evolving similar eyes or wings, but no other species independently evolved our intellectual capability. This suggests that the path to intelligence could be an exceedingly strange accident, requiring a perfect storm of circumstances that almost never occurs, a series of evolutionary coin tosses that all had to come up heads. If the dinosaurs hadn't been wiped out, if a different set of genes had won out, perhaps intelligent beings would never have arisen on Earth. Some models treat the emergence of intelligence as the product of several extremely unlikely steps. Earth just barely managed to squeeze them all in before the sun makes our planet uninhabitable. This hypothesis suggests we might indeed be essentially alone because the evolutionary dice came up in a unique way here. It's like winning a billion dollar lottery, expecting another planet to have also won the same jackpot stretches credulity. The universe could be full of life, plants, microbes, perhaps even dinosaur-like creatures, and yet devoid of astronomers or philosophers. Intelligence might just not be a common outcome of evolution anywhere. Here's a dark possibility. What if the very qualities that make a civilization intelligent also contain the seeds of its destruction? Maybe consciousness itself is a double-edged sword. High intelligence allows for technology and complex society, but introduces psychological and social challenges that may be nearly impossible to overcome long-term. An advanced species might fall victim to nihilism or loss of purpose once they understand their origins and place in the cosmos. Alternatively, the drive for expansion that fuels technological growth could inevitably lead to self-destruction before the species manages to spread to the stars. Some scientists suggest that any intelligent, technological species likely ends up destroying itself due to an inherent instinct for unsustainable expansion and unintentional self-destruction. In other words, the ability to invent powerful technologies might always outpace the wisdom needed to use them safely. Perhaps advanced minds tend toward instability, a galactic madhouse hypothesis. The pressures of understanding reality, or creating superintelligent AI, or even civilization-wide existential crisis when faced with a lonely cosmos, could cause societies to implode psychologically. Every time a society climbs to a certain level of advancement, it might undergo a kind of self-induced annihilation or retreat. Some theorists describe what they call asymptotic burnout. As a civilization grows, it faces exponentially increasing crises that require ever faster innovation to avoid collapse. Eventually, a society either crashes under the stress or consciously steps back from expansion. In the latter case, they experience a homeostatic awakening, deciding to prioritize stability over exploration. Such a civilization might survive a long time, but would purposely stop looking outward, becoming invisible on cosmic scales. In either outcome, burnout or turning inward, we never hear from these civilizations. Intelligence may be self-limiting by nature. If humanity hopes to avoid this fate, recognizing these psychological pitfalls is crucial. Time might be the most overlooked dimension in our search for companions among the stars. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, 
and intelligent life might flare up like brief fireworks in that vast timeline. What if civilizations existed millions or even billions of years ago, or will exist long after we're gone, but just not simultaneously with us? Imagine two fireflies blinking on a summer night. If their flashes don't overlap in time, one will never see the other, even if they're physically close. Likewise, across cosmic history, intelligences could be isolated by epochs rather than distance. We humans have been sending detectable signals for barely a century, a cosmological instant. There may have been a flourishing alien civilization in our galactic neighborhood 100 million years ago, when our ancestors were small mammals scurrying under dinosaurs' feet. Earth could be either early or late in the timeline of galactic life. Some research suggests Earth might actually be on the early side, whereas many stars, especially long-lived red dwarfs, will still be shining billions of years from now, potentially giving rise to civilizations in the far future. Conversely, maybe a wave of civilizations flourished in our galaxy billions of years ago when conditions were different, and we're the latecomers to a party that's already ended. The profound distances in time mean we don't overlap. Even if the galaxy cycles through many pockets of intelligence, they might be separated by gulfs of time so vast that by the time one species could reach out, the others have already gone extinct. It's a melancholic image. The Milky Way could contain a cemetery of lost civilizations, each shining briefly, then disappearing, ships passing in the night, cosmically speaking, never meeting. These unconventional perspectives on cosmic loneliness stretch our imagination of what it means to be alone. Each paints a different picture of our place in the universe, yet all carry profound implications. If fundamental constraints or evolutionary flukes mean we are one of a kind, then intelligent life is the universe's most fragile treasure. If we're living in a cosmic petri dish or experiment, then our every move might be observed by unseen intelligences, raising disquieting questions about purpose and free will. The idea of incomprehensible alien minds challenges us to broaden our definitions of life and recognize that we might share the cosmos with entities we cannot comprehend. The solipsistic universe concept forces reflection on whether our existence has special significance. Even the silent multiverse scenario, while speculative, reminds us how precious our own universe is. If it's the only stage we have, shouldn't we strive to fill it with life? Perhaps the most emotionally charged implications come from the existential horror of true solitude. It would demand psychological resilience, finding meaning without external validation from the stars. It could spur humanity to become better stewards of our world, knowing we carry consciousness's torch alone. In a way, all these fringe theories, as wild as they are, circle back to an encouraging point. We matter. If we are alone or nearly alone, then what we do has cosmic significance. And if by some twist we are not alone, then striving to understand and prepare for contact is still a noble quest. Whether we stand solitary under the stars or share the universe with strange neighbors we have yet to recognize, these speculative ideas push us to expand our thinking. They remind us that the truth could be more profound or bizarre than standard models suggest. Asking, are we really alone, isn't just about counting aliens. It's about holding up a mirror to humanity. It forces us to consider why we crave company in the cosmos and how we should value our own existence. Solitude, in any form, can be daunting, but it can also be empowering. If we are the universe's only children, then it's up to us to explore, to create, to give the cosmos a voice. And if someday we find we are not alone after all, understanding these far out ideas will have prepared us to meet the unknown with eyes wide open, ready for whatever form our cosmic company might take. What do you think? Are we alone? And if so, why?